أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى أصحابه وعلى جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته As we journey through the Quran we are now inshallah tonight we have concluded hearing one third of the recitation of the Quran the surah or the surah we heard today uh, surah anfal and surah tawbah most of it and surah anfal was revealed in the second year of hijrah of course a medinan surah both of them are after the major battle was waged against the nascent muslim community the battle of badr and it contains a detailed and comprehensive review of that battle and the rules of engagement in war and in peace. As you know, it was quite a strenuous and a trying battle for the Muslims. And eventually the Muslims won, alhamdulillah. But instead of gloating over the victory, there is a critical analysis of the battle. The moral weaknesses that come to the surface <clears throat> in that case, in that, in that battle, as well as what needed to be done in a different way and what re reforms needed to be implemented. There's also an elucidation of the etiquette when dealing with prisoners of war and dealing with the spoils of war. The moral lessons of the conflict between truth and falsehood has an ongoing perpetual battle throughout history and the qualities which lead to success in any conflict has also been elucidated. The sanctity of treaties has been enjoyed and the Muslims commanded to observe treaties as long as the other party does not break them. There's an address of the various ideological forces that oppose the Prophet at that time. We are Reminded not to forget the needy through whom the barakah of which we are enriched by helping them and the barakah that Allah gives through that help. Instruction concerning the laws of war and peace. And for Muslims to be strong, there have to be a good cordial relationship between Muslims themselves. Surah Tawbah or Surah Al-Bara. Some people consider this as part of one surah. There's no basmala between it. Some scholars say, no, it's considered as one surah. Some say, no, surah tawbah or surah bara, repentance or immunity, the two names by which the surah is known, actually deals with issues of war, and hence it does not begin with the traditional bismillah as the other surahs begin. And this, unlike the Battle of Badr, this one is after the expedition of Tabuk. And these were among the last verses, or this surah contains some of the last revelation that the Rasul received towards the end of his life. The surah compi comprises of three primary discourses. One, revealed, deals with the occasion of Hajj towards the end, before the Rasul went, and with the sanctity of the treaties and lays down principles of rules and regulations that must be kept between nations in their relationship with one another and therefore also the relationships in international policies. Second discourse was revealed as they were making preparations for Tabuk. In this discourse, the believers were urged to act in the promotion and the defense of the Ummah. There's reference made to the commitment of true believers and of course, Referencing the example of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he came from Mecca to Medina accompanied by Sayyidina Abu Bakr and the incident in the cave. The third discourse was revealed on his return from the campaign of Tabuk. And there's a reprimand to those who are indifferent to the cause of justice and those who are deceitful to the believers. It contradistinguishes the dedication of those who are committed to faith and the hypocrisy of those who merely pay lip service. There's a criterion for dispensing of zakah and for being charitable and for generosity of spirit and the responsibility of believers, male and female, being protectors 
and helpers one of the other. The ayah we have chosen for today, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayu alladheena amanu ati'u Allah wa rasool. In numerous verses like that we find, ati'u Allah wa ati'u rasool. In this case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adds, وَأَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ مَصْبِرُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah says, O oh, you who proclaim faith, obey Allah and His Messenger, and do not fall into unnecessary disputes, unnecessary argumentation, which will lead to division. For then you will become weakened, and your power will depart. You see, we have a deen that is easy to understand, a deen that is simple to implement. Ma ja'ala alaykum fi deeni min haraj. Nothing in the deen is meant to be difficult. And the Rasul in the hadith documented by Imam al-Bukhari is reported to have said, Inna hadha al-deen yusr, wa lan yushadda al-deen ahadan illa ghalaba, fasaddidu wa qaribu wa abishiru, wa yassiru wa la tu'assiru. The Rasul is reported to have said, this way of life is indeed easy to understand, simple to implement. If anyone among you is severe or harsh or dogmatic regarding the religion, it will become burdensome upon him. It will overwhelm him. So reach out, seek means of approachability, seek means of coming close together. Give glad tidings rather than negative news and make things easy. Don't make things difficult. We are a global community of faith that transcends the barriers of race, of nationality, of color, of gender, of language, and of time. Inna hadi ummatukum ummat awahida. We are designated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as khaira ummah, ukhrijat linnas, the best of communities evolved for the benefit of humanity. Moreover, we are intended to be a community that is an exemplary community a median community, a balanced community, a community not inclined towards extremities. And that's why Allah says, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةَ وَسَطَى We have made you a median, a balanced nation, community. لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاء عَلَى النَّاسِ So that you may serve as a model and a testimony for humankind at large. We were not intended to be a community focused on differences and division. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ فَرَّقُوا دِينَهُمْ وَكَانُوا شِيعًا لَسْتَ مِنْهُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ إِنَّمَا أَمْرُهُمْ إِلَى اللَّهِ ثُمَّ يُنَبِّيُهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْعَلُونَ As for those who divide their religion into sects, groups, you have nothing to do with them. Their affairs with Allah who will eventually inform them of what they had done. We were neither intended to be a community bogged down in argumentation and disputes, which we are. Much of the split in our community, whether it be the Eid or the Halal or the Cheese or Moon, whatever issue it may be, it's not to do with the faith in itself. It's to do with personalities and power. And people suffer. Families suffer. Because we honestly believe what my Sheikh says, what my Masjid says, what my group says. Believe me, it's not rooted. The division is not rooted in the faith itself. It's in our misunderstanding and the way we manipulate power for those who are in authority. So Allah says, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ تَفَرَّقُوا وَاخْتَلَفُوا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَهُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ Be not like those who are divided among themselves and fall into disputes after having received clear signs. There's no, no more revelation. This ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِي It's a clear book. A book free of doubt and doesn't put doubt in your mind. We consider our global community of believers to be an ummah by what we share and what we agree upon regarding the fundamentals of our faith, not by the way we differ amongst ourselves regarding secondary issues. Once a person wrote a book in the time of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, and in the book he genuinely wanted to highlight trying to understand the different opinions amongst Muslim people. So he called it Kitab al-Ikhtilaf. So Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal told him, لا تسمه كتاب الاختلاف ولكن سمه كتاب السعة. He says, do not call it a book of difference. Rather call it a book of flexibility accommodating differences. So I means to make space. Due to this, 
one of the scholars said regarding whether it be the Khulafa, whether it be the Sahaba, whether it be the Ahlul Bayt, whether it be to do with the Ulama, and perhaps more to do with the Ulama, he says, Ijma'uhum Hujja Qati'a. Their agreement and their consensus is decisive proof. وَإِخْتِلَافُهُمْ رَحْمَةً وَاسِعًا And he said, their difference is a means of flexibility and accommodation, and it is a mercy. That's why Allah says, وَأَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا Obey Allah and His Rasul, and do not fall into unnecessary disputes. فَتَفْشَلُوا Fashal is, you know, a rope. It's made up of a lot of strands, of thin strings, any rope. A rope is not just one strand, it's a lot of strands, that's why it's called a rope. Strands of thin fiber put together that makes it a rope. Tafshalu means to unwind each one. In other words, if you pull a, a rope, you can't pull it apart, you can pull a car, two cars can be pulled. But if you take one strand by itself, it can be broken by a child. But together, they can, they can carry up a car, the strength of it. So in other words, if you become argumentative and fall into disputations, you will become weakened like the unbonding of a rope. Your power will depart. We consider our global community of believers, our ummah, by what we share and what we agree upon regarding the fundamentals of our faith. And don't add to the fundamentals what are not fundamental. Chapter 2, verse 177. Anybody who says, La ilaha illallah, and believes in this, we have no right to go out and call them kafir. It's almost an industry, even among some ulama, to go and make people kafir. We have made Muslims, more Muslims into kafir than kafir into Muslims. It's a sickness. It's an industry. It's a business. And therefore, Muslims must acknowledge that those who have been and continue to be part of the Muslim family, considered to be such by the vast majority of Muslim scholars, will be treated like, by, like Muslims by Muslims. We have a problem. Every time something happens somewhere in the Middle East and the Zionists are about to attack something, then a madhab issue comes up. It's dormant all the time until something happens political and we like fools, nare takbir, here we go, in defense of the deen. Neither understanding ourselves, nor understanding our differences. We acknowledge the fact that differences there have been, and differences there will continue to be. If a person does not overtly deny the fundamentals of our faith, such a person is our brother and sister. They are our brothers and sisters without prejudice. Al-Muslim akhul Muslim. Either they're Muslim or they're Kafir. Either they are Muslim or they are Kafir. You can't say, well, they are Muslim, but yeah, I No, 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 you make excuses now. Give me a fatwa that somebody is Kafir, then he's Kafir. Not by your madhab or your school of thought, by some village in somewhere in India or somewhere there in Egypt or some village in, in, in Zimbabwe or something. I'm talking about the consensus of the ulama. If you can't do that, then you are bamboozling the people. Al-Muslimu akhul Muslim. La yadlimu wa la yaghdulu wa la yahkiru. A Muslim is a brother of another Muslim. He never oppresses him, nor does he lie to him, nor does he undermine him, nor does he humiliate him. At-taqwa ha huna wa yashiru ila sadri. Taqwa is here, and he pointed to his heart, the Rasul, three times. In one of the battles, one of the companions killed a person who said, an enemy on the battlefield, not a Muslim initially, an enemy on the battlefield. As he was about to kill him, the man said, la ilaha illallah. There's not someone out there who's maybe a munafiq or something. On the battlefield, as he's about to hit him, he says, La ilaha illallah. So they came to the Rasul's attention. He said, Why did you kill the man? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I was about to beat him, strike him. And then he said, La ilaha illallah. To this supposed kafir on the battlefield, in armor, with a sword in his hand, the Rasul asked the Sahabi, Hal shakakta an sadruk? Did you cut open his heart to see if he's sincere to say, La ilaha illallah? This is our attitude towards a person who's in armor on the battlefield. What do you think should be our responsibility towards each other? And that's why the Rasul said, he continued to say, Kullu al-Muslim ala al-Muslim haramun damuhu wa iruduhu wa maluhu. He said, hadith documented by Imam Muslim, all things of a Muslim are sacred to every other Muslim. Sacred. 
not important, not valuable, sacred. It's haram to touch upon it. What is it? Kullu al-Muslimi al-Muslimi haramun damuhu wa maluhu wa ardu. His blood, his honor, his integrity, and his property. We should be committed not to wantonly make any Muslim individual or group irrespective of their school of thought. And I say this without fear of contradiction, by the way, without arrogance, but without fear of contradiction, because we are being bamboozled far too much regarding this issue. Our enemies can do to us what they do in the Middle East exactly because we fall for this. A major war is going on in Syria. We are, of course, against the government of Syria. This is something else. They're going to get us into a, a madhab war. They're getting us into a madhab war. And then we're going to get up and send money to one and the other send money to somebody else. In the meantime, nobody's, everyone is being attacked in the Middle, Middle East except Israel. It's the only country, if you want a peaceful place, no, Israel is a place to be. Everyone is fighting. And this one is making fatwa, the one that one there, ISIS and MISIS and Yosis and everything else. We are supposed to be united on common fundamentals of our belief and what we share in common through history. Manfa'at ek hai, Allah Ma Iqbal says, Manfa'at ek hai, is qawm ke nuqsani bi ek, ek hi sab ka nabi, deen bi iman bi ek, haram paak bi Allah bi Quran bi ek, kya bari baati hoti jo musalman bi ek. What benefits us, benefits all of us in the community. What harms us, harms all of us. If they kill us in Kashmir, they're killing us. If they hit us in Palestine, they're hitting us. You think they're asking, excuse me, are you Salafi or are you Shia? Oh no, before. They don't care whether you still live. We make those differences. They kill you nonetheless. So he said, Manfaat, what benefits us, benefits all of us. What harms us, harm all of us. We have one Nabi, one Deen, one Qibla, one Quran. Everything we have is one. What a pity that we are divided. In some circles, there's often a tendency to misconstrue differing perspectives as opposing forces. You see, this is immaturity, intellectual immaturity. Because I differ with you, doesn't mean I oppose you. That means you're not mature enough. You have, don't have intellectual much. People differ. They've differed before. They differed in the left time of Rasulullah. Sahaba differed among themselves. When the Rasul, the battle of Uhud, the elders wanted to go out and fight, or want to stay in the city and fight, the elder youth said, no, let's go out. And eventually there was a disputation amongst them. And the Rasul then put on his armor. And when the young, young Sahaba realized, you know what, the Prophet is inclined towards this. And you know, let's rather go with the elders. They told the Rasul, said, no, I've already put on my armor. It's not proper for a pro Prophet to be in armor and not to go to battle. Let's do as you've decided. So there was difference on many occasions. But no animosity, no hatred. Their differences led for us to be able to do things in a different way. It was not meant to divide us. So, in some circles, people misconstrue and they have a tendency to misconstrue differing perspective as if they are opposing forces. Divide the community into enemy camps over secondary issues rather than uniting over greater issues. You know, in, in South Africa, there are over 140 Christian denominations. Over 140 Christian denominations. I don't know, and I can challenge you here, can any one of you in all your life remember any Christian calling another Christian out of the fold? Some of them don't even marry each other. The Catholics have their own view, and the Protestants, and the Calvinists. Each group have their own thing, and they're born again. And the Mormons, and... Have you ever heard 140? We hardly have three Madaib in South Africa. 140 of them. Not only do we divide ourselves, Hanafi and Shafi and Shia and so on, among the Hanafi of Barelvi and Diobandi, and among the Diobandi we have, and among the Barelvi we have, we are not Muslim anymore. We are Muslim, but we are Sunni, but not that Sunni, the Bid'at is one, the other real Sunni. And then we are Hanafi, okay. But I'm not the, the Diobandi, I'm Barelvi. But not the Barelvi, that one, I'm the Protahil Qadri, not the anti Tahil Qadri. Now, which Muslim are you? Why aren't you Muslim? Because by the time you are a Muslim, you are tainted with so many garbs and so many uh, uh, shades that you are not able even to see the reality. Be a Muslim. Somebody asks you, I'm Muslim. Are you Sunni? What does it matter to you? I'm Muslim. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasul. That's it. But what, what madhab are you? Why? Mother Muhammad. I pray like this. Oh, you want to be Shafi? No, I'm, I'm Shafi. Pray like this. Hanafi also pray. They pray differently. 
If we knew the leniency of Imam Abu Hanifa, I'm, I always say to my students, if Abu Hanifa, Imam Abu Hanifa was to come, he was so lenient. He was extremely lenient. That some people accuse him of kufr for his leniency. Some people accuse him of kufr for his leniency. If he must come and see how dogmatic the Hanafi, some of our Hanafi brothers are, he'll say, if you are Hanafi, I must be Catholic. <laughs> Abu Hanifa, Abu Hanifa will be shocked. So, we can't turn minor differences of jurisprudence into major ideological conflicts. Imam Malik, the teacher of Imam Abu Hanifa and of Imam Shafi said, Ma ra'aytu shay'in shay'an adhabu lid-deeni wa la anqusu lil-muru'a wa la ashghal al-qalb min al-khusuma. I have not seen anything more harmful to religion, more undermining of one's sense of honor and more unnecessary in preoccupying our feelings than unnecessary arguments and disputation among people. You see, we overstate our differences. Or we don't fully comprehend the multi-dimensions of an issue. Or we have vested interests, depending where we get paid from. Depending who pays us, we, we dance according to the Piper's John. Sometimes you come even in America, you'll have a masjid here, a masjid there. Many parts, alhamdulillah, is beautiful. Some parts, no. And they don't go there because of business. Don't go there, they are kafir. Don't go there, they are kafir. You know why? So each one stays in business. If all my people go there, then who's going to give me business? Have vested interest that causes us to undermine the other. And sometimes we become excessively partisan to one opinion. Note always that one who has a wider vision tends to be more tolerant. Mawlana Al-Taf Hussein Hali wrote in his Musaddas. He wrote this in 1894, 118 years ago, 120 years ago, 120 years ago. See if it rings a bell. Na sunni me or ja'afri me ho ulfat, na nu'mani wa sha'afi me ho millat, wahabi se sufi ke kam ho na nifrat, مقلد کرے نا مقلد پہ لعنت رہے اہل قبلہ میں جنگ ایسے باہم کہ دین خدا پر ہسے سارے عالم a hundred and twenty years ago he says between the shia and the sunni there is no love between the hanafi and the shafi there is no bond between the wahhabi and the sufi there is dislike those who follow a school of thought they berate those who don't follow a school of thought such kind of hostility is ensuing among the people of one Qibla. So much so that we are the laughing stock of the world. A hundred and twenty years ago, we are exactly where we were. Exactly where we were. In fact, if we haven't moved in 120 years, we're actually backward. Remember, among the rights bestowed upon us by Allah is the right we have the right to understand. We don't have the right not to understand each other. Allah says, among the mark of the mushrikeen is beside us coming to partners to Allah, they split their faith into groups. وَلَا تَكُونُوا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ فَرَّقُوا دِينَهُمْ وَكَانُوا شِيعًا كُلُّ حِزْبٍ بِمَا لَذِينَ فَرِعُونَ Ascribing partners to Allah who split their religion and become schismatic. And here's the catchy part. Each group says, we are the ones who are the ones. You ask people, I find it so arrogant. There's 73 sects, 72 amongst the Christians, 73 amongst, I don't know. And then one group is going to Jannah. That's our group. That's arrogance. I heard a hadith, authentic hadith. This one is not of the highest degree of authenticity, by the way. The 73 business. Higher degree, لا تدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من كبر. That person will not enter paradise who has an atom's weight of 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 arrogance in his heart. If you say I'm going and you're not going, that's the height of arrogance. Sayyidina Umar رضي الله عنه was Khalif one day on Eid. He was crying. Eid Eid of Eid al Fitr. So someone came to him, said, "Ya Amir al-Mu'minin, you're crying." He said, "I don't know if Allah will accept my fast and if I He'll forgive me." He said, but how can you say this? You are of the people who are blessed. He said, لو يدخلون الناس جميعا في الجنة إلا واحد أخاف ساكون واحد. If all the people in the world go to Jannah except one person, I'm sure it will be me. 
And if everybody is saved from Jahannam and one person must go to Jahannam, I'm sure it'll be me. This is Iman. Ah, this idea that we are the right group. Be careful of that group. Differences we have. Differences we had. And differences we'll continue to have. But neither let the secondary differences be the cause of unwarranted disputes, nor the primary focus of our attention. Otherwise, our power will depart and we will be weakened by our division and our enemies will be strengthened by our disunity. May Allah grant us the wisdom to be united and love one another. Deal with our differences, yes, but still love one another. None of you will enter paradise unless you believe and none of you believe unless you mutually love one another. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله والسلام عليكم